Okay, now before we can get into the molar technique, we have to talk about the most important element of playing the drums. Now believe it or not, it's actually how to hold the drumstick. I'm amazed at how many players, even professionals, have never got this simple concept correct. Now a perfect example was myself. I played drums for almost 10 years not knowing how to hold the sticks properly. This posed a huge problem. I had no rebound, no speed, and no control. Once I actually learned how to hold this piece of wood in my hands, I was amazed at how I started sounding better and moving around the drum set with more motion and fluidity. So let's start from scratch. Okay, we'll begin with having no drumsticks in our hand. The first thing I'd like you to do is take your right hand and make a gun with it, just like this, and now from your wrist, point it to the left. Okay? And left-handed players, you do the opposite. Now at this point, I would like you to take your gun and lay it down just above the snare drum rim, just like that. Now at this point, we're going to take the barrel of the gun and bend it slightly at the first joint. Not too much. You don't want to do this. You just want to bend it just slightly enough to create a small little pocket between the tip of your finger and the second portion of your finger. Now, what we're going to do at this point is you're going to take your drumstick and you're going to rest the back of the stick in the pocket you created and the tip of the stick on the snare drum. Now what we have to do is we have to find the balance point of our drumstick. Now what that is, is it's the area of the stick that creates the most natural rebound when you let the stick naturally fall. Let me demonstrate. If I'm holding the stick way too far back and I lift the tip, I let it fall, it just dies. I get nothing out of the stick. Now if I have my index finger too far forward and I drop the stick, it's a very weak, unconvincing rebound. If I'm way too far forward, the stick's just going to fall out of the back of my hand. So what you've got to do is you have to find the sweet spot or the balance point of the stick. Now I use the Vic Firth Extreme 5A sticks and I find that my balance point is in between the H and the Vic Firth flag there. And when I put my finger on that spot, listen to that. The stick wants to naturally rebound. Whether you push on the back of the stick or raise the front of the stick, there it is. So what you can do next is you can start dribbling the stick like a basketball. Not only have you found the balance point, you're going to impress all your friends. At this point, you've found the balance point. If you haven't found it, keep checking. All right. Now at this point, I'd like you to try putting your thumb on top of the drumstick like this. We want to try to get as much of the fleshy part of your thumb right on top of the stick as possible. Not the tip of your thumb, not the curve of your thumb, not the sides of your thumb. You really want to build a nice stable fulcrum point between your thumb and your index finger. Notice that the stick is still in the first joint. It hasn't slid over to the second one. Still in the first joint and the fleshiest part of my thumb is on top of the stick. This is called the fulcrum point. Your back fingers are not touching the stick yet. That's okay, we're gonna get to that. What I want you to do at this point is I want you to take your hand, turn it over so your palm is now facing the ground, just like that. Fingers still aren't touching the stick. Now, if I raise my hand up from this point, I want the back of the stick to come in contact with the soft, fleshy part of my hand. Okay. Don't do this. Even if you were taught to do this way, try option B. Okay. You might stick with option B in the long run. I know I did. So at this point, once the stick is in contact with the soft part of your hand there, I want you to take your fingers and gently wrap them around the stick. But not really wrapped. I just find that my fingertips are coming in contact with the drumstick. It's not this. It's this. Notice, no tension always relaxed. So now at this point, I'm going to bring my hand back down to the snare drum, show you how this looks on the drum itself. Now that we've learned how to hold the stick in one hand, all you got to do, grab your other drumstick and match them up. Simply just look at your hands, make sure that everything looks exactly the same. You don't have to go through the whole process that we did earlier. You can if you want, but just simply look to make sure that the stick is exactly the same in your left hand as it in your right hand. This is called matched grip. 
Now, for you traditional players out there, or for those drummers who are interested in tapping into this technique, no pun intended, we can also call this grip the conventional grip, the military grip, or the jazz grip. Call it what you want, it's all the same idea. Now, this was a grip that I was accidentally introduced to. I remember going to one of my first great teachers and saying, can you teach me some brush technique on the snare drum? He grabbed his brushes, started playing in a traditional grip form. Looking over and seeing what he was doing, monkey see, monkey do, I grabbed my brushes, started playing the same way. That's how this all started. Now on that note, I had never learned how to play the traditional grip properly. I enjoyed it. I liked the way it looked. A lot of my favorite drummers were using it, so I decided to find a teacher who could help me refine this grip. Now although it's not my main grip, I'm mainly a match grip player, I used it as a, an additional tool in my playing. I liked it for jazz and brushes because I liked the subtleties of having my hand underneath the stick as opposed to on top of the stick. Okay, let's break down the traditional grip. Put my sticks away for a second here. Take your left hand, put it out just like you're going to shake somebody's hand. Now grab your drumstick, and I want you to place the stick, the back part of the stick, in the web portion of your hand between your index finger and your thumb, like so. Okay, now we have to find our old friend, the balance point again. So you might have to search for it. I'm using a different stick. I'm using Don Familiaro's pad stick, so I gotta search for it. Nope. Uh, close. Ah, there it is. So just like in match grip, make sure you find that balance point. So now that we've found the sweet spot of the drumstick, what I'd like you to do is take your ring finger, place it underneath the drumstick like this. So right in between the tip of your finger and your second knuckle. Somewhere right in the middle of the finger, just like that. See if you can actually lift the drumstick up at this point. Something like that. You do that? Perfect. Now, let's take our middle finger and our index finger and gently rest it on top of the drumstick. Now notice that my hand is also not turned like this. I see a lot of players play like that. You have to avoid that because you really have no control. Keep it just like you're still shaking somebody's hand. At this point, I want you to practice this, relax, and always have fun.